Hey friends, so you just got to push three and you're probably like, Hujuma, how's it do it? What I'm going to do in this video is give you a nice and quick beat making workflow that you can either copy or borrow parts from. We're going to do everything from the push itself, so no laptop or computer monitor needed, and this will work in either standalone or in hosted mode. Push 2 users can also benefit from much of what I'm about to go over, so make sure that you pay attention. Thanks to Ableton for sponsoring this video, and thanks to you for watching. Let's go. Okay, cool, so here's a brand new set. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the plus button. What I can do is either choose to add a device to the track that I'm on, or I can add a new track with a new device. That's what this is basically saying. So I'm going to click in on the jog wheel to get into the devices, and I'm going to go down to drums. This is in your collections, so you can put things in this if you want to. There's all kinds of drum sets already in here. And if you turn on this little preview button, you can hear what the kit sounds like. Right. Now you can use the jog wheel to cycle through all these, but I feel like the jog wheel is kind of the slower approach to get through the kits quickly. If you actually use the uh, D-pad over here, you can get through them really quick. So I can just blam, boom, right? So let's go ahead and choose a kit here. Let's choose, ooh, the kinky kit. Let's choose that. <laughs> all right, so loading up this kit. Now, something that's really nice about the new push is that they've integrated the capture button, which is this little guy down here. Now, what's cool about this is I can play an idea without having to know what the BPM is or anything at all. I can just literally just go for it, right? And so something that's nice about that is that maybe you're just sitting here jamming and you're not even thinking about it. And all of a sudden you're like, wow, that was a really good idea. You just hit the capture button. That's the idea behind it. So let's just go ahead and play a beat. Boom. So now I can touch this lower button and we can see it cool, 84 beats per minute. That was the speed of this. So now what I can do is I can maybe look at the grid. So I'll click on this button up here to look at the clip and we can see those drum hits that I've put in there, right? Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the metronome so we can hear how close this was to the actual clock. Man, I gotta say that's, that's about as good as I've done. That's insane. Look at that. I was really close. I'm only a little ahead here and a little behind right there in terms of if I wanted to be right on the clock, which I don't necessarily want to be right on the clock every single time, and we'll get into that. Cool, all right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn off the metronome. Awesome, so the next way to add drum hits to our clip, of course, is to just live record them. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna hit this little guy right here, and then anything I play will get into the clip. <laughs> now, of course, that wasn't as good of playing as the last time I played. You can see I've got a lot of late hits and a lot of early hits and stuff like that. And there's different benefits to having late or early hits, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit quantize. Now, what quantize will do at the moment is I've got it set to 100% on 16th. So now this is going to be very rigid, very robotic. Maybe that's what I'm going for, but let's look at some other things in the quantize menu. Now, the way you get into the quantize menu is just hold quantize, and we can see we've got some options here. So maybe the first thing to talk about is we could add swing to this. So I could turn the swing knob up. Let's turn it up to like 35% or something. And when I let go, nothing is going to happen because I haven't given it a quantize command. You can still see that the clips are right on the downbeats. But if I hit quantize once in a non-momentary fashion, now take a listen to the beat. So now my hi-hats are swung, as well as the kick drums that aren't on the ones and threes, right? So we get the... But let's look at the quantize menu again. Another thing I could do is I could turn the swing amount back down, right? And then the quantize amount could be down too, right? Let's put this maybe on like 45%, okay? I'm going to let go, hit quantize again. Now take a listen. Now we can hear that we've made it somewhere in the middle. There's a little bit of swing on the kick drums and the hi-hats that aren't on the ones and threes, but the beat sounds a little bit different. So you can work with the quantize menu to kind of work with swing and shuffle and get kind of these like interesting sounds that are happening, right? Okay, so I'm gonna go back into my quantize menu and I'm actually gonna quantize to 100% with zero swing. So now I'm gonna make this rigid again. 
Okay, cool. So now we're back to that rigid feel. I want to show you another thing you can do. You can actually go in here with the jog wheel and select individual drum hits and do interesting things with them. One thing I could think of doing is actually selecting all of these hi-hats, which is what I'm doing here. And what I can do is I can go in here and say, all right, I'm going to nudge these actually back in time a bit. And this will give us a completely different feel. Let's nudge them 10% and hear what this beat sounds like now. Now this isn't exactly shuffle because we don't have hits that are on the beat all the time. We have hits that are always off the beat. So this gives us a different feel as well. So this is another way to work with that, right? Word, so that's something you can mess with. I'm gonna hit quantize again, go into the quantize menu, give this a little bit of swing, and we're gonna call it a day, okay. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is add a couple more drum hits, but I feel like what I need to do is add more variance to this beat. So another thing that I can do is that if I get out of the edit menu and I look at the loop length, we can see it's only one bar long. If I hit this double loop, check it out. Now we have a two bar loop and I can zoom out and take a look at the whole thing. That's great. Cool, so the next thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and record some more drum hits. So I'll go ahead and quantize that, and now we get. Cool, so this hit right here, I'd like that to actually be a different sample. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna select this, and what I can do is I can actually move it up or down which drum pad I want it to be. Let's go ahead and make it the synth bass acid. <laughs> Perfect, right? So you can see how much the jog wheel helps you just like blast stuff out super fast. Okay, so speaking of samples that you may or may not want, let's do another thing. Let's get out of clip edit mode and we're gonna go back to looking at the device controls. Now, first of all, what I can do is I can hit plus and I could actually go in here and check this out. This is so cool. You could actually change the entire kit. So I could go over here and say, all right, I'm gonna go with this acoustified kit. Check this out. That's the sound that we already have with our kinky kit, right? <laughs> but if I click this in, check this out. This will load a new drum set with all the samples, but it will retain the clip that I recorded. So check this out. <laughs> That's hot garbage. Let's try something. <laughs> Let's try something else. I'm just going to blast through this. Blam. All right, we're going to try something random. Boom. Right? So you can load up entirely new kits. Let's just say that your just idea is just uninspiring. It's just not working. Load up an entire kit. It's that easy. And then you can just undo it, right? Okay, we're back to our kinky kit. Okay, so now we've looked at replacing the entire drum kit. Let's do something entirely different and let's replace an individual sample. One of the greatest features that they added to Push 3 is the hot swap button right on the push itself. So right now I'm looking at the kit level, okay? And if I add anything, what's gonna happen is it's gonna replace the entire kit. But if I click on this button, I'm now looking at the sample level, right? So let's, I wanna replace this hat. I'm not really into that hat sound. So what I'll do is I'll hit this button, right? And then what I'll do is I'll click on the hot swap button, right? And so now if my preview is pushed on, I can hear all these different hats, right? So I don't necessarily want an acoustic hat. I'm going to go this way. All right, so I like that hat sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the jog wheel. Boom. What it's going to do is it's going to load that sample into the push. And now we get, right, a, maybe a more fitting hi-hat for my beat. Okay, so I'm gonna get out of hot swap mode and let's talk about something else. You can also do this live and that's what's so powerful about this. Let's say you're playing a beat and you want to change one of the samples, but you wanna hear it in context. That's what's so powerful about this. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit play. Now I'm gonna select the snare drum by holding select and hitting the snare. So now I don't hear it. I'm actually not hearing the snare, right? This is actually a clap, but I'm not hearing it, right? Let's hit the hot swap button. Now you can see it automatically knew, okay, I'm looking for another clap. With the preview button turned off, I can just go ahead and go through here and click the jog wheel and try different samples. That's a good one. <laughs> so 
So this is so cool. You can just go through here and try different samples out in real time very quickly, and all of a sudden, boom, an entire whole new universe has opened up to you. So maybe some aspect of the beat is really working and you're really enjoying it, but man, that one sample, whatever that sample is, it's just not working for you. And so this is just a really awesome workflow. I love the hot swap button. Okay, cool. So now we've got the basic feel of our beat down. We've got the, the clip that we want to use, and we've got the samples that we want in there. But to me, this kit doesn't sound very well mixed. It kind of sounds bad, right? There are some samples that are very loud and other samples that are very quiet, right? So let's go ahead and look at mixing this. So I'm going to go back to my kit level, right? And if I click this button, boom, we can see all the different drum cells, all right? Now, if you hit select, it will jump to that specific drum hit and it'll actually page over. But you can also use this to page over too, right? You can also use the D-pad to page over. Now, how do I mix this? Well, let's go ahead and go to the mixing view right here and we can see, yeah, this is awesome. We have all of the volumes, all of the pans for these individual drum hits, right? So let's go ahead and listen to this beat. And to me, the hi-hat is very loud. I don't really like the way that the hi-hat is working with everything else. So I'm gonna turn the hi-hat down a bit. And something else that I don't like about the hi-hat is that it sounds like it's panned. So I'm going to go into pan, and I'm going to turn that back to the middle. Cool. So as you can see, you can mix the kit right here on the push. It's amazing and super fast with just this button. All right, so the next thing that you can do that's really rad is you can get into the actual device itself okay, of each one of these samples. And likely most of these, if not all of these, are made in simpler, right? So if I hit the kick, we can see that there's a, a, an audio sample here. And if we see that audio sample, likely it's either a simpler or a sampler, okay? So we can do all kinds of different things with these different drum hits. We're not locked into having to use the sounds that are on here. And that's what is so wonderful about creating beats here with a drum rack. So I'm gonna click, as you can see, it says simpler. If I click simpler, what we're doing is we're looking at the device itself. And if I click into that, we can go into all the different simpler controls, okay? So how did I do that? Let's go ahead and look at that again. This is the main page, okay? This is the sample, this is the simpler, right? And if I click on the simpler one more time, we can see all the different available controls within the simpler. Now, if we go back a level and we're just looking at simpler, it shows you kind of like maybe the most important controls right on the front. So, you know, where's the sample starting? Where's the sample ending? So let's go ahead and look at the hat again. We can see that the hat actually is a bit late, right? So what I could do is I could go to start and I could move that in a little bit. Now we get... Now a sample will sound different, of course, depending upon where you play it. And you'll also notice that the mode is one shot. And if I go back to the kick, the mode is actually classic, okay? What classic mode and one shot mode, the way that they differ is that there's an ADSR envelope with the classic mode and the one shot mode only has fade ins and fade outs. Okay, so let's maybe go back to the hat. Now, the hat has a pretty sharp attack. What I could do is I could actually fade it in a bit and kind of make it more smeary. So it has kind of like more of a shaker feel. I could also fade it out quicker by taking the end and moving the end over here, right? So now we have a really close end. Now it's a short sample and then fading it out. Now, if I do that, I might find myself being like, okay, so the hat's kind of quiet, so I could turn up gain right here, right? But what I'd like to do is I'd like this to kind of fade out normally. I'm going to bring this out a little bit and I'm going to turn the fade in just up just a little bit and get a little bit more of a somewhere between a hi-hat and a shaker sound. Rad. All right, so let's go back to the kick drum and let's look at something else. Let's go into simpler and actually get a little bit more into the weeds with what simpler can do. So I'm in the simpler mode now and we can see the different pages that we have. Let's go into the envelopes. Right now we have a volume envelope, so take a listen to this. This volume envelope can be changed. So right now we have sustain up, right? But if I turn this all the way down, we can work with our kick drum. Maybe we want a tighter kick drum sound, right? Now, if I turn the decay up much past one second, we're gonna hear just that original sample play all the way through because you can't make it decay longer than the original sample, right? But we can definitely make it shorter, right? But I kind of like how the kick drum has a nice big long sustain, right? So I'm gonna turn the sustain all the way up. But what I can do is I can look at a different envelope. So I can go over to my filter envelope right here, okay? Now check this out. 
Now what's cool about this is that if we turn the filter envelope on, this will now apply this envelope to our actual filter over this sample. So I need to turn the envelope amount up, right? And you can see that we can actually control the filter frequency from the envelope page. This is really useful having this right here because check this out. Now, nothing sounds different, but if I turn the filter frequency down, check this out. we can hear that that filter is closing down over 600 milliseconds. As I turn this decay amount down, though, check this out. Now we have the subs. The subs of the kick are lasting as long as maybe I want them to, but the actual brightness of the kick drum is dialed in sooner. If you want this effect to be more apparent, you can go into the filter page itself and turn up resonance. And this is a really fun thing to do with kick drums. Let's go ahead and maybe dial the frequency back a bit. <laughs> That's a lot of sub. So I'm kind of enjoying it uh, around 200 hertz. I'm kind of enjoying that sound. We can also apply, of course, velocity to the filter and kind of maybe make it move around depending upon how loud I played the kick. So that's gonna get some movement going. Awesome. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the fact that this is all committed to a clip, okay? This is all living on a clip. So what does that mean? We can actually make automation data appear in the clip by interacting with the clip itself. So maybe something that I would wanna do is go back to my hi-hat and I'd like to add some movement to the hi-hat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the simpler, okay, of the hi-hat. So I'm clicking on simpler and now I'm in the simpler controls. I'm gonna to go to a filter, right? and we're gonna turn the filter on. First of all, a lot of these samples may not have their filter on. So I'm gonna turn it on, I'm gonna switch it over to high pass mode. So now we shouldn't hear anything. But as I turn frequency down, all right, there, it's starting to appear, right? Now I could turn up resonance a bit, and maybe I wanna go with a 12 decibel filter. And the way that I would do that is I'd hit this button. So we can hear that that movement kind of sounds cool. I'm gonna turn up the resonance a bit. And we can hear that sounds kind of cool. So the way that I would commit that action that I just did is record. So I'm gonna hit this record button. Now we can see it moving on its own, right? Radical. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna maybe do some panning so I can go into my mixer page, I'll click on panning. Now check this out. I'm going to go ahead and pan this hat around and record that data. Boom. Now something else that's important to realize is that we're not stuck with the effect chain that's on this drum loop, right? Right now, I'm not really sure what's going on with this specific instrument. Let's go ahead and take a look back at the device pages. There's not that much going on here, right? There's a couple controls for maybe there's a, there's a drum bus living on here. But what I can do is I can hit this plus button. Now check this out. What it's asking me is it's saying, okay, do you want to add a device to the present instrument or another instrument on top of this device, or do you want to add a new MIDI track and focus on something else? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to audio effects, and let's uh, crunch this down a little bit with a glue compressor. So I'm going to go down to glue compressor. I'm going to add it. Okay. So now here I am in the glue compressor. I'm going to crush the threshold a bit, right? And we can hear. It's very quiet. We're going to do some makeup gain. Now that would be maybe my compression layer. Now let's do some uh, parallel compression. So I'm going to turn this all the way to dry and I'm going to start to introduce this. And what this is going to do is you're going to hear it. It's kind of, I'm crushing the drums. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back in the wet signal and we're going to add a little bit more sustain to the drums, right? Cool. So let's go ahead and AB this. So what I can do is I can hit mute, right? This mute button. I'm holding the M. And what I can do is I can turn the glue compressor on and off and see if I like the result. All right. So this is with it. Without it.
radical, right? So let's do something else. Let's go ahead and add another effect. So hit plus, go into device, go into audio effects. Well, let's say we wanted to get wild. I'll go ahead and add a redux, right? <laughs> Just for the fun of it. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to add some grit to this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and record, turning the sample rate down a little bit. Nice, maybe a little bit of jitter. Okay, cool. Now maybe the final thing I'd like to do is EQ this a little bit. We can hear some of that top end material that may not be that pleasing, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit plus device. We're gonna go to an EQ8 under audio effects. Boom. Now the EQ8 uh, interface is really, really nice. We can choose all these different bands, right? By moving through the bands. And we can see that the uh, fourth band by default, of course, is set to a high shelf. So maybe what I'd like to do is turn the gain down a little bit here. Cool, and maybe I'll change the frequency up a little bit higher, up to like nine or something. And let's go ahead and maybe we'll move over to another band. Let's go to band two right here. Band two is sitting over uh, 200 hertz. Maybe I'll move the frequency of that up to something like 400 and we're gonna bring out 400 just a little bit. Radical. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the output gain a little bit to compensate. And again, you can always go ahead and hit mute, the mute button, and listen to whether or not the EQ8 made a change that you like. So here's with it, without it, right? A little bit of character, a little bit of class, a little bit of low fineness being added by both the Redux and the EQ. Cool, so as you can see, I used push in standalone mode and created a pretty compelling drum loop, right? This was created all with just the push, and remember, you can do this both in standalone and in hosted mode. You don't have to look up at your laptop screen. The workflow is precisely exactly the same, and to me, that is one of the superpowers of the Ableton Push 3 platform. It's just a really, really good idea. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like what you saw, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Much love, everybody. I'll see you next time.